morning. Thank morning. you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Nice day, huh? Yeah. Now, if I tell you that's a red poppy, you would know it's a red poppy, but it's hard to tell. I overheard, so Flanders Field, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, but you, you, you got a head start on this. So how does that start? The, the poem? Yeah. I don't know that. Where's I've Flanders? only heard it twice in my life. Where's Flanders Field? And that state. Now that hundred France? <laughs> I'm, I'm totally that, wrong. That, that is close. Is it? I thought you were going to say Europe and that would have... No. You, you knew I want to be something more specific yes. than just Europe. Yes. Now they got that term. Uh, and he just told me today during the sermon. Flanders uh, a destroyed monastery. I don't know. Mm, sorry. Belgium? Is that where it is? Okay. That's a famous. That's cool. That's for you. Oh, well, thank you. It's famous because. Flanders fills the poppies grow. A blah, 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 row on row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what. Um, this is all about the Japanese oh. internment camps? Or is it. Well, what is it about? It starts with the internment camp because of what you know, Pearl Harbor happens, and there's a little bit of it. No, there's a lot of panic. Right, I remember through history that yeah. they gathered them up and put them in camps in Nevada and all over, right? Well, uh, the western part of the United States where they had eight of them, two actually in, in Arkansas, but but there and there was a reason for that. It, and th it wasn't because they took Japanese Americans from the East Coast and put them in Arkansas. Okay. I've never California, been, Oregon, Washington, a little bit of Arizona. This there was this mass incarceration, as because the general responsible for the security, what they call the Western region, was a little racist, a little bit. Just, you no, he was a lot. Yeah, General DeWitt, uh, because the executive order signed by the president only authorized the military to rela relocate, and DeWitt said. Green light, everybody. He's going to pick up 80,000 uh, U.S. citizens of Japanese ancestry and 40,000 Japanese citizens, and he's going to wholesale just move them into these camps. Were they treated like criminals or just, I mean, well, obviously, kind of, yes, probably. Well, there was no due process of law. Wow. So there was no following criminal law. There was no uh, honoring their constitutional rights. They were just... Battalion was given to and the, the poster goes up and it says, "On this date, you're to report here. What you what you take is what you can carry." You and that's get just right because here. of Pearl Harbor, that right? Well, I mean, there's... there were a couple of things that happened. Mm -hmm. um, the one, there was that strong anti-Asian sentiment here on the West Coast, anyway, yeah, no, before the war. Okay. Um, I mean, that's why uh, Japanese uh, immigrants could not become citizens. There was a law that said, and then there was the alien land law that said, and you can't own property. And these were all against the Asians. So all this happens pre-war. <laughs> where, where did that come from? The hatred, do you know? Well, not sure, but one looked different. <laughs> When the Chinese came to work on the railroads, okay, there was that conflict because they would work cheaper and faster. Um, they they start taking jobs. So the Ch Japanese took some of the Chinese jobs away. Is that well, there was first the Chinese and then the Japanese come. Okay, um, but it's it's these Asian faces that will come up, and because they're you know, it's, you know, there's a, a certain work ethic. So the you know the Japanese farmers, um, in some ways, better farmers. Oh yeah, and harder workers. So if you if you have if you're the Jane adjoining farm, you can't produce as much at that cheap. You, you're not going to like the other guy. He's your competition. You know that could easily happen to Mexican Americans right now. If, if the government decided, hey. If, let's suppose Mexico hypothetically attacked us, or theoretically, maybe the same thing would happen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, think when, um, after 9-11, yeah. everybody's 
Oh yeah. The government if you're Muslim about, or yeah. Oh, they, they were talking about uh, creating camps again. I just said, did they not learn anything yeah. from 1942? Yeah, people were hiding in their houses. And, yes, and part of this, and the Attorney General of the United States back then wrote a wrote a memo to Roosevelt, and he said. If Walter Lippmann, who was the big newspaper guy at the time, yeah. he says, if Walter Lippmann knows something about uh, Japanese Americans uh, 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 guilty of espionage or sabotage, subversive, uh, subversive activities, he should tell the military and the FBI, or it's like yelling fire in the theater. He knew it was fake news because all these things that the newspapers, and Lippmann wasn't the only one, all of the major newspapers were So putting, fake news is not a modern thing? <laughs> you know, and, and that's something that we have to worry about today. We have, yeah. we, there's a tendency, I think it's human nature, this news station tells you things that you agree with. So right. you tend to watch that one. Right. Now this one says things that yeah, you don't believe in, so you don't listen to it. So you get honed in on just right. this. So this must be the truth. Uh, maybe we need to listen to the opposite side and form our own opinion. Yeah. But most people, it's yeah. there, there's actually a psychological term for this. Well, I why we personally have cut down my news intake because it's so negative. Yes. I, I, I can't handle knowing who got shot last night again and again. Yeah. And yeah, there's watched, no positive in the news anymore. Yeah, I watch news that comes out of the UK. I watch Sky yeah. News. But, I, well, you know, I'm, I, I watch it occasionally, but I, the news is so focused on negativity. Yeah, because that's what sells. Yeah, but it's not... I think, hopefully they'll realize that people are tired of hearing about all that stuff. There was, some years ago, yeah. there was a newspaper that decided that they're going to print good news. So, and it's called... They probably failed, right? It, it, it failed. Yeah. People are not interested in good news. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're ready for that now. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. But, but one of the things that sometimes they talk about is, um, and maybe this speaks a little bit to, not so much with the, the 442, but looking forward for, for the world. Yeah. But the Japanese Americans had the infantry that was really good. They also had a field artillery battery that was really good. No and they, because you did things with slide rules on protractors. Right. You know, you know what a slide rule is? Yeah, because my <laughs> wife's grandfather worked at Mare Island. Okay. And he was a draftsman. So okay. I do. Well and so back then, when, when they're firing artillery, they didn't have computers, obviously. Right. So they're using slide rules to do these calculations. Yeah, the ship, the ship was made by one, I'm sure. <laughs> so a lot of these, uh, a lot of people had to learn how to do this. These guys, the ones that were in the 522nd Phil artillery. There were scientists, engineers, uh, physicists. They knew how to use this stuff. So they didn't have to learn to do that. And therefore, they were really fast and really accurate planning the trajectory, how much powder to put well, in. Who makes the most reliable cars? Japanese, right? <laughs> I believe so. That's yeah. my personal belief. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a very smart. There engineering and, mines and, and they're precise yeah the vietnamese have a new uh, car coming out that i don't know when it's going to hit the u.s it's a, it's all electric people have said well, it's really dynamite so every vehicle i own is japanese i have a honda a lexus a subaru my daughter got a lexus she she learned to drive it in my car and now she wants a lexus so she got a lexus oh. and i have a honda motorcycle Okay. Because I got tired of everything breaking down that I've had before. Yeah. So, something to be said, of course. Okay. But when the uh, when the Japanese Americans, when the 442 was moved from southern France into um, back to Italy to break the Gothic line. Yeah. 
the Seventh Army said, "Okay, infantry can go back to uh, the infantry can go back with the Fifth Army to help uh, in Italy uh, breaking that Gothic line in northern Italy." Seventh Army said, "But we're going to take the field artillery guys because uh, we're going into Germany." So then with that, they were able to some of the Japanese Americans were actually able to go into Germany, uh, be part of the. Um, Okay. Oh, There's another part of saving world. some of the Jewish That's prisoners in the sub camps of so During the internment period, were they already enlisted in, in the military? Okay. Uh, many, most were not. Some of the ones that were enlisted already in the service. Yeah. Um, were then kicked out of the service. Oh, they, that's my question was. And some were, and I don't know who makes the decision, but some guys uh, were drafted in in early '42, and they when they when they went through all their basic training and yeah. advanced training, they never got weapons training. Uh, uh, Pearl didn't happen, but they kept them in. There were about 700 of them, uh, and they became transportation, supply, medical. Uh, so some of these guys were working in hospitals. Interesting. Uh, and later on, <clears throat> when the 442 had so many had taken so many casualties, and they needed replacements. They start to pull guys who had been uh, already in the service, mm -hmm. and then they got a lot of weapons training. And that's all they needed was weapons training. Yeah, because everything else they were doing already, yeah. right? So I talked to one guy, and he said that you know six weeks. He went to Florida and he learned and in some ways it, it was really very cool because in six weeks they got to handle almost every weapon. So you haven't heard all of these stories, have you? No. Okay. Let me tell you some happy stories. Uh, I grew up in yeah. this area. My company there's a book called uh, Then There Were Eight because when I company did this uh, rescue of the lost battalion they started that campaign with 186 guys when there was a and they were the tip of the spear for the third battalion which had to lead the charge up the middle 100th battalion went this way second battalion went this way mm -hmm. to rescue the the texans mm -hmm. and third battalion got this thing it says here you're right up the gut thing and they nicknamed that thing suicide hill afterwards uh. My company, at the formation after they started with the 186, they had eight riflemen standing in that formation. There were the commanding general of the 36th Division, a guy named Dahlquist. Uh, he wanted to thank the 442 for rescuing the, the Texas Battalion, and so he ordered uh, the, the whole regiment out there. And he looked at it and there weren't anywhere near as many guys as he thought. And he turned to the regimental commander and he said, when I tell you that I want everybody out here for this uh, review, I mean everybody. Mm -hmm. And the, the colonel said, sir, this is all I have left. Yeah, well. Wow. There were, now there are two parts of that. One, there were a lot of casualties. Yeah. I mean, like I company, eight out of 186. But it was also to that the 100th Battalion, so not quite a third of the regiment, had already been deployed to southern France. The general didn't know that. He was, a, I think, a little bit of a goof, but he eventually got three stars. But my company, but the whole regiment really was depleted. So while they were, they were moved to southern France, guard the border, what we call the French Riviera, right? <laughs> and also, but also the Maritime Alps there between Italy and France to keep the Germans from leaking over. So you, you had to run patrols and there were sentries and, and there was some activity, but it wasn't the heavy duty stuff they had had up there in the Vosges Forest. Some of these guys, you're along the Mediterranean, the, the uh, Riviera, yeah. the hotels and the yeah. restaurants, the beautiful beaches. But some guys got stuck up there in the mountains. My company got stuck in the mountains in a little town called Los Cadet. It's about 20 miles off the coast as the crow flies. Yeah. And when the Germans left there, if it was edible, they took it. So when the 442 arrives, 
these guys, the kids are starving, the families are starving, so they start sharing a little bit of their meals every, of every day. Mm -hmm. And then the chaplain, I think the chaplain gets credit for this, says, with November of 44, Christmas is coming, let's save, we'll order more rations and we'll save a little bit of, of what we use every day and we'll host a Christmas party for the whole town. Wow. Well, it's, a, it's a small town. Yeah. So they host a Christmas party in December of 1944. 75 years later, 2019, go back to visit and they have uh, had a local artist create a painting of their town of Las Cadets to commemorate that Christmas party in December of 1944. Awesome. And then there's a soldier and they said this is Shig Doy and Shig Doy is from I Company. Oh. He was he was one of the eight riflemen that could stand in that formation. So here he is at the um, in front of the church where they had the, the Christmas party. Well Shig Doy is still alive. So I interviewed him last year and yeah. he's 103. Wow. I said Shig I've been looking at this painting with you in there. Did you did you really used to look like that? Because at 103, he doesn't look like this now. Right. And he pulls out of his file the black and white photo oh, wow. that was taken in December. That's awesome. Of 44. And, you know, she really did a really good job. Yeah. I said, Shig, uh, I, I know that you guys made presents to give to the kids. And I could see you carving a little car or an airplane. Yeah. And maybe making things out of paper. How did you make a doll like that? And Shig said, notice, no doll. That was something the artist put in. Oh, I see. Yeah. I okay. huh. But still doesn't hear too well, doesn't see too well, but boy, he's, he's very clear. She, she, the little girl's dressed quite nice. Yes. In the picture. Wow. Great I, story. Now I was there uh, last year with Great. my son. And in, in the same little church. Yeah. And there, it was a small group. There were 16 of us. And I'm the last person off the bus. So the last one into the church in, in the group. And after I walked in, a woman walks in behind me and starts crying. Everybody turns around. And I said, I didn't do it. <laughs> I don't know why she's crying. I didn't do it. Well, she was four years old at that Christmas party. She, it wasn't that girl. No, was it? Oh, okay. it was a local girl. Okay. Uh, and as she walked in, yeah, they couldn't they couldn't figure out later on who this girl was. Right. They weren't able Still, to identify her. Wow. But here's this this woman, eighty something years old, because when she saw the Japanese faces, the emotions kind of flooded back over her. So, a nice story. So yeah, thank you for but, that. But I didn't do that. Now, once they got all the replacements. Yep. Get people from the states, people come back out of the hospital, and you know, if they could patch you up and you could walk around, you're good to go <laughs> back to your unit. Awesome. And then, so now they're full strength again. The fifth army is saying, back in Italy, General Clark, he really liked the 442, and he said, He's been stuck, he's got 30,000 guys trying to break through the Gothic line in northern Italy. And he hasn't been able to do it. You know, five months, that's a long time to be trying to punch through. Yeah. But the Germans are good. Yeah. They know what they're doing. So he's going to get the 442 to come back because they, the 442, the Japanese Americans, had a reputation with the Germans. They were called the Little Men of Iron. He said, these guys just wouldn't stop. So Clark has the idea, and it's a good idea. He says, We'll bring the 442 back from from France, and we're not going to sort of do this as secret as we can. Yeah. So if you you have a shoulder pack that shows your 442, you take that over. The vehicles are all painted out as to what unit it, you belong to. All that gets painted out. Right. Because they move all everybody from uh, France over to Italy. They don't want at the, the border. They don't want the Germans to know they're coming. Right. They travel at night up through uh, Italy yeah. um, and then sleep during the daytime. 
big secret. And the third battalion, which includes I Company, ends up being in this little town of called Asano. Uh, Germans still don't know they're there. And what they're going to do is going to climb down this steep hillside. It's about a 60 degree because I was there last year. That's pretty steep. <laughs> it's pretty steep. Yeah. You're going to cross a little uh, river. Yeah. And then you're going to go up 2,800 feet. I did talk to a guy who actually made that climb. Now I got to see it and did the climb at the very end of it. But this is something, you, it's not a two day deal. When it gets dark, you go down and then you have to go up. So you have to kind of hustle as yeah. you do this. And you have to be quiet because you're, you're trying to, at the top of this uh, Monte Florito, it's, it's kind of like the high point. It's not real high at 3000 feet, but it's the high point in the area, so you can you can see all the way to the ocean or, or to the Mediterranean. Right. Um, and the Germans still have artillery batteries, naval uh, gunfire, uh, coming from a point out there uh, right on the coast. So these guys are directing the fire. So you really want to take this. When I talked to this guy, I said, well, when you, when you had to make this climb, did you have to climb like this? And he said, no, there's a goat trail led by a Italian partisan. I said, shoot that. Switchbacks? That, that, that switchbacks. <laughs> yeah. But I said, well, shoot, that's not so bad. How wide was the goat path? And he's held, how wide is a goat? Yeah. He says, the path is about this one. Yeah. I said, oh, oh how steep was it? Very. He says, times that you have to hold on to the side of the cliff yeah. as you walk up the path. Yeah. Said, how dark was it? Couldn't see the guy in front of him. Wow. They're trying to sneak up on the yeah, trail. Yeah. And he said he would reach for it and tap the back of the guy in front of him uh, so he would know how steep it was and when he was making a turn. Wow. Now these guys were in the mortar platoon, the ones that I was, the guy I talked to. Yeah. So he's carrying three mortar rounds. The guy in front of him got the mortar plate. It's a 24 pound disc that they put the mortar in right. to stabilize. It's heavy. Yes. Sort of like a turtle. He didn't want to fall that. off the cliff either. <laughs> and there's, they said, if you start to fall, don't yell for help because it'll give away the surprise. If you fall, uh, try not to make any sound when you hit the ground. <laughs> Funny things for your head. But up they go. And when you take a break, you, you can't take everything off and sit down because you're, you're working on this little ledge. You right. just lean up against the mountain to kind of take the weight off a little bit. Then it's time to go again. And at one point, Yosh, the guy I've talked to, said he couldn't feel the, the guy in front of him. Right. So he says, and this guy's name is Tack. And they didn't do this based on who, who they thought could carry this thing load best. You lined up in alphabetical order. And the guy I talked to, Yosh Nakamura said, if his mother had named him with the name that was before T, because the guy in front of him was Takio uh, Nakamura, right. said anything, he would have had the big disc instead. Oh. But he said, this guy was a farmer from Idaho. He was short, but he was real sturdy. So he, <laughs> he could do it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Tack didn't think quite that way, but he gets this thing. And for some reason, at one of these breaks, instead of leaning against the mountain, Pat leaned the other way. Well, he would have fallen all the way to the ground, except remember that big plate? That it caught on it a tree caught, or something? It got caught in the hillside. Oh. So Yosh know, was whispered. Dangling. You know, where, yes, dangling. <laughs> he said, uh, you know, where's Tack? And here's his voice says, I'm down here. <laughs> now, if I was tacked, I think when I fell, I would have said, I'm close to the trail. I'm down here, guys. No, yeah. He waited until somebody's asking for him. He reached down, pulled him back up, up they go. Wow.